Welcome to the kingdom. us the opportunity to worship you, Father, for waking us up in our right mind, Father, with a new spirit, Father, just to worship you. And Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us. Father, we pray, hallelujah, Father, for the worship that will go forth, Father. Hallelujah. We pray also, Father, for the speaker of the, this hour, Father. We just want to thank you, hallelujah, that your word will go forth boldly and will not come back void, Father. We thank you that our hearts will be open and receptive to receive the, Lord, uh, the word of the living Lord. And we just want to thank you that our ears are open also, Father. So we just want to thank you, hallelujah, Father, for keeping us safe on our way here, Father. And we want to thank you for keeping us safe on our way back, Father. So we pray for those, hallelujah, who... Need a church home, Father. We want to thank you, hallelujah, that you add to the church daily, Father. And we want to thank you, hallelujah, Father, for those who are have left you and want to come back. We call all the backsliders, Father. We want to thank you, hallelujah, that they will receive something magnifying today in your hallelujah from you, Father. And we also pray for those who who need to hear from you, Father, who want to be saved, Father. So we just want to thank you, hallelujah, for just being with us today, Father. So we just want to lift you up. We just want to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And it's Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Don't start yet. Don't start yet, Elder. Keep going. Mm, just play for us.
Right now, I need you just from your from your mouth, from your belly, talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, sing unto him a new song. Y'all are so, come on, from here, and I know sometimes that may seem a little strange, may seem a little weird. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. There is none <laughs> like you. Can you attest to that? No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity. of the Lord, give him praise. As you think about the past, give him praise. As you think about where you are today, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Give him praise. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Lord. We give you thanks, oh God. Father God. Hallelujah. Let's go with the confession of faith, please. Now when we read. Now when you read the confession of faith. Let it resonate. Thank you, Father God. Hey, God. Oh God. Oh God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice by choice and be glad in it. We are glad to be in the house of the Lord and in the land of the living. 
Therefore, we decree, declare, and prophesy. Where two or three have gathered in his name, he is there as Jehovah Elyon, the Most High God, Jehovah Elohim, the God of creation, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, Jehovah Shama, the Lord is present, Jehovah Sikkenu, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Mekadishkim, the Lord our sanctifier, and because Jesus is Lord of this house, we agree that every seat is being filled in every service, for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, love, and unlimited resources for healing, deliverance, wholeness, and breakthrough. The good hand of God is upon us. Opportunities, and this is a are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood of warfare, worship, winners, witnessing, and the word. We are confident that what he has begun in us, he will until the day of his coming. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Somebody in this place, let that play. Somebody in this place, y'all come on for real. Hallelujah. Do you believe it though? Hallelujah. Do you believe what he died for? Hallelujah. 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 We believe God. We believe God. We believe, Father. <laughs> We believe what you said about us. We believe what you said about us as a unit. We believe what you said, God, about our kids. We believe what you said about our marriages, God. We believe what you said, Father. Hallelujah. Woo! You said greater works. Greater is here, y'all. Hallelujah. Woo! So we bless you this morning, Father. We come for you and only you, God. We come to lift you up today, oh God, and give your name glory, honor, and praise. Go ahead, Elder. Woo, Lord. Y'all, he's too good. He's so good. Y'all know. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. 
Sometimes you got to get your praise on. Yeah? <laughs> Sometimes you got to get your praise on. All kinds of stuff in your face. All kinds of stuff in your ears. Huh? <laughs> but when you say, I will call upon my Lord. When nothing is lining up the way I thought it should, when nothing is going the way that I thought it should, I will call upon the Lord. you suffer a little while, but after you shout it a little while. <laughs> Can anybody relate to that? So after you shout it for a little while, now we're going to fall on our faces before the Father.
Some of you don't know what else to do. So join us and let's do what Jehoshaphat did. Let's worship him and praise him. And as you worship and praise him, I believe God is saying that he's going to turn it around. While you're worshiping him and praising him, he's going to turn it around for you. Those of you out in streaming land, as you worship there in your homes, as you worship there in your homes, some of you are where Jehoshaphat was. You don't know what else to do about your situation. But I believe I hear the Lord saying that if you would just worship and praise me now, I will begin to turn it around for you. Like he turned it around for Jehoshaphat, like he turned it around for Jehoshaphat, he's going to turn it around for you. You just begin to worship him. You begin to praise him. Press your way towards your situation. Press your way through. 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 Come on. Press your way through. Your mind may not understand it. Your mind may not understand it. But put your eyes on him in worship and believe that he will turn it around for you. Bow down. Bow down. Slip your hands to him. Come on, congregation, lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Turn it around for him, Father. They don't know what else to do, Lord God. Turn it around for him, Father. Turn it around for him. Turn it around for him, Father. Turn it around for him, Father. Turn it around for him, Father. They don't know what else to do. So they're going to worship you. And we'll believe in God that as they worship you, you are turning it around for them. You are turning it around for them. You're turning sick situations around. You're turning financial situations around. You're turning family situations around. Turn it around for them, God. Turn it around for them, Lord. Turn it around for them, Father. Turn it around for him, 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 Father. Turn it around. This is holy ground. Turn it around for him, Father. Turn it around, Father. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around, Lord. Turn it around, Lord. Turn it around. Turn it around, Papa. Turn it around, Papa.
in the name of Jesus name above every name as we've entered into your courts with praise and into your gates with worship we set ourselves in agreement with our brothers and sisters that's facing situations where they've thrown their hands up and say father I don't know what else to do but you impressed upon me to say to them if they would just worship you like Jehoshaphat did it was when they begin to worship that you begin to turn things around. Father, they are tired of crying. They are tired of praying. They are frustrated. They are discouraged. Father, and they need to see you turn it around. They are weary in well-doing. They are tired of praying. They are tired of fasting. They are tired of asking other people to pray for them. I'm asking you, God, as the set man of the house, Turn it around today. Turn it around today. Turn it around today. Turn it around today. Anybody gonna agree with me? Turn it around today. Come on, anybody gonna agree with me? Turn it around today. Turn it around and let it begin now. Let it begin now. Let it begin now in their bodies. Turn it around. In their finances, turn it around. In their health, turn it around. In the relationships, turn it around. Turn it around, Lord. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Come on, everybody give God a hand praise right here. Come on, give him a hand praise. Come on, give him a hand praise. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, we bless you. Yes, God. We got it. Yeah. Me as we come down. <laughs> Sorry.
Come and bow down. So come and bow. Now let's bow together. Down. Let's bow before we we pay homage. We pay homage to him now for allowing you to see another day, for having the activities of your lips. We pay homage to him now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand. Praise everybody. Beautiful. Beautiful. While you're standing, grab your Bibles and open them to Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read from two places, but I'm going to just ask you to stand in Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Galatians 5 and James 3. Elder Michelle, BYV, to Swift and to Team Bates. We thank y'all for creating the atmosphere for us. Thank y'all so much. Amen. We also want to celebrate Elder Verna for encouraging our hearts on Tuesday night. Amen. Bless you, Elder. Come on, clap like we're clapping for you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, I'm going to read from Galatians 5 and James 3, but I'm going to just have you stand for, because we've been standing for a minute. But Galatians chapter 5, verses, chapter 5, verse 13 through 14, the New Living Translation. Are you there? Galatians 5, verse 13 through 15, the New Living Translation. Somebody say, I'm almost there. All right. You just don't want to be almost to heaven. You want to be there. Amen. Verse 13 of Galatians 5 reads, For you have been called to live in freedom my brothers and sisters, which is what we're trying to experience now in the kingdom. Somebody say freedom. Freedom, freedom to worship, freedom to praise. Let me just say this. We don't, we don't give him love, but this boy is a triple threat. This boy is a triple threat. He's from Ohio. We're not going to hold that against you all. I'm, I'm, I'm joking, y'all. This boy playing the drums and the bass at the same time. Come on, y'all, come on, y'all gotta give him some love, man. This dude is playing it. Come on, y'all. I would be sinning if I didn't acknowledge that. He's playing the drum. You know, I, I, I'm sorry, I just stopped reading the scripture, didn't I? Boy, it's just show you. But you know, I heard that bottom and I'm like, man, somebody's really keeping that bottom this morning. Didn't he still that? <laughs> and then I looked over there, he's doing the bass and the drums. Man, we love you, Swift. Come, come on, give, give Swift a hand. That is absolutely incredible. All right, back to Galatians 5. Back to Galatians 5. Verse 13 says, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Anybody don't mind being in a church where we talk to you about your sinful nature? Yes, time out for you going and just hearing how good and wonderful you are when you know all week God been looking at you saying what, what's that about all right but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sin for nature instead use your freedom to serve one another in love for the whole law can be summed up in this one command love your neighbor as yourself verse 15 is our focal point but if, you are, but if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. Again, verse 15, if you would read that verse with me. It says, but if you are always, if you are what? Always. If you are what? Always. Biting and devouring one another. Watch out. Beware of the word of the Lord is blessed. May, may we get the understanding. You may be seated. Now, John, now I'm going to turn over to James chapter 3, the New Living Translation. It will all make sense in a minute. I'm going to ask you to grace me to read several scriptures this morning. We are Bible teaching church. Amen. 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 Galatians. I mean, James chapter 3, the New Living Translation says, Dear brothers and sisters. New Living Translation. 
James 3.1. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church. For we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if you, can, if you could control our tongue, if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. At least I think I'm going to read that again. Somebody say amen under those masses. Again, look at James chapter 3, verse 1, the New Living Translation. I'm going to read down to verse number, uh, verse 12. Notice what it says. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should be teachers in the church. See, a lot of people want to stand behind the pulpit, but they don't understand the responsibility that comes with it. Watch this now. As well as God's going to hold us to a greater accountability for what we say from behind the pulpit. Oh, you ain't got to say amen, but it's the truth. Dear brothers and sisters, that means that you should become teachers in the church for who, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. If we could control our tongues, (laughs) we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way, in every other way. Verse three, we can make a large Hearts go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. For in the same way, the tongue, for in the same way, the what? For in the same way, the what? For in the same way, the what? In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. If you can set your whole, listen, it can set your whole life on fire. Each one of those are points, Elder Maddie. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. Flipper, remember Flipper? But no one can tame the tongue. It is restless, evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursings come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw fresh water from a sally, salty spring. Troy, good to have you this morning, my brother. We are continuing a series, Troy, entitled Focus on the Family. And our subtitle this morning is God's Son, we need to talk. Oh Couples and communication. Look at somebody and say, we need to talk. Come on, come on. Somebody say, we need to talk. Tell somebody, I'm glad you're here this morning. <laughs> Already, some of you have turned me off, Richard Wright. Have you turned me off, Richard Wright? I'm just joking. I'm just joking. When the series focus on the family with this morning subtitle, I try to pray in here, Elder, and I'm wrestling. And, 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 and singles, I haven't forgot about y'all. To our precious widows, I haven't forgot about y'all. But there's messages in the crock pot cooking at the house. And I'm going to pick y'all up along the way, amen? But let me deal with these folk who say, I love you first. Anderson Dane, yeah, I love you. Yeah, okay, all right. So we'll continue our series on Focus on the Family with the subtitle, We Need to Talk. Somebody say it with me. We say it with me. We Couples and communication. There's a researcher by the name of, what's this, babe? There's a researcher by the name of Albert, and I'm not pronouncing his name right, Mayrabim. He tells us that we, listen, he tells us Listen, that the words we speak only make up 7% of the communication process. 
The words we speak make up only how much? 7% of the communication process. Real communication is 7% words, 38% tone of voice, and 55% nonverbal. That's your facial, your expressions, your gesture, and your posture. Okay, I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna say it again, because I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere, because a lot of times, it's the way your face look. I always like to say, Deacon Don, we always tell them folk we're happy. Well, you just haven't told your face. Amen. Again, this researcher said that 7% of our community, listen, said that, listen, told us that our words that we speak only make up 7% of our communication process. He said that real com- communication is 7% words, 38% tone of voice. And 55% nonverbal, that's your facial expression, your gestures, and your posture, is referred to Elder Washington as the 55 slash 38 slash 7 formula. And it is a proven fact, beloved. Listen, see, we've always been told, Counselor Kim, watch this now, that there's three major problems in, in marriages. Sex, finances, and communication. I believe that the major problem in marriages or relationships, period, is communication. Because why, why do I say this now? Stay with me. Why do I say that, Latan, Latanya and, and Ladon? Because if we're having problems in our marriage when it comes to sex, if we can talk about it. Oh, I'm in the wrong church. If we're having problems in our marriage and finances, if we could just talk about it. Somebody say, we need to talk. We need to talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. If we can just talk. Yeah, those other areas may, may be trouble areas, but if we can just talk about it. He went on to say that having poor communication makes a relationship go from bad to worse, and it ultimately ends marriages. One writer said it this way, when a couple's going to realize that communication in a marriage, Minister Vincent, is likening to blood flowing in the body. The minute, Minister Z, that the blood stops flowing, you have a corpse. And the minute that, listen, and the minute that communication stops flowing in our marriage or any relationship, it dies. So your silence, while I know at times you might need to go in another room and chill for a minute, but seven days later and still nothing? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, God. So then a, a, a researcher went on to say, Elder Barbara, watch this, Elder Barbara, that there's at least five major levels of communication. Five major levels of communication. I'm, I'm going to get to the nitty gritty. Just stay with me. I, I, and I'm not just about us getting up here and, and us running. I want to help you. Are y'all listening to me? Does anybody want to be helped? I, 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 need, I need a salvation that works on my situation. You know, all the sugar, the sugar stuff, keep, man, keep that. When I'm on co-pastor's nerve and she on my nerve, I need somebody to tell me how to communicate. You was, I know y'all were surprised that, 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 that I said that, didn't you? Because, yeah, you know, I don't know, y'all, y'all, y'all listen to these fake Christians who try to give you the impression that it's hunky dory at the house all the time. But if it's always sun, you dry up. If it's always raining, it's flood. You got to have a balance of the two. And, 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 and I, always, I always like to say to them, watch this commission, I always like to say to them, because if you say, I wonder what it's like in that preacher's house. I told you what it's like. Who drunk up my juice? <laughs> Who had my car last and didn't put gas in it? What is it like in the preacher's house? That Take that baby diaper outside. Y'all been leaving him in the trash can. <laughs> H- have I got a witness? <laughs> what is it like in the pastor's house? What's the number? Thring, what's the number? Oh, we don't know who that is. Don't pick it up. Don't, don't pick it up. And all the honest people said? Yeah. <laughs> I got some of y'all to wave at. I'm glad y'all honest. Because I don't care how spiritual you are. 
All of us have the same problems in our house. Amen? Okay, so there's five levels of, of communication that the, the researchers say. Are you with me? The first one says, the first level one is cliche conversation. Cliche conversation. What's cliche conversation, Dick and Zoe? How's it going? What it do, player? Okay, y'all save. I'm sorry. My wrong audience. Okay, how are you doing today? Good morning. And don't y'all, you, you know, and don't you just want a Christianity where one day you can come up to somebody, watch this, Deacon's Cornita, watch this, Karen, and, and they say to you, how are you doing this morning? And we take off the church face and say, not good. Oh, y'all, y'all, listen. Can, can we have a Christianity team, Burns, to where somebody come up to you and say, how you doing today? I'm not doing good today. No, no, we, see, see, we gotta have, we gotta get rid of this facade Christianity that makes it think just because we got Jesus that we don't have bad days. Are y'all listening to me? And that everything is already always good at home. Now we know Jesus makes the difference, but the truth is sometime in our homes, Jesus is our savior, but he ain't Lord because if he was Lord, we would be doing what he say. He said, if you call me, why well, call me Lord and not do what I say? So a lot of times he is savior in our marriages. That's why we're able to exist, Erica, but he's not Lord because we are not doing what he say. Bishop says, you can say no, but you can't say no Lord. Okay, that went over your head. You can say no, but if he's Lord, you can't say no, Lord. And part of the problem is Jesus is just Savior in our marriage. He's not Lord. He really don't call the shots. Okay. So level one in our communication is cliche. That's, that's talk like, how's it going? Fine. I see you later. That's what? Cliche. Level two of, of communication is reporting the facts. Are you going to pick up the kids? I thought you said you was. I picked them up yesterday. You like the guy that came home with all the groceries and said, okay, honey, I got everything. And she said, everything? He said, what did I forget? The kids. Okay, I got to go back. Okay, don't worry about it. Swift, I wish I'd had you on the drums then when you did that. All right. But level two is reporting the facts, stuff like, are, are you going to pick up the kids? You, you know, uh, yes, I'll be home at five. That's level two. That's reporting the facts. Level three is ideas and judgments. Level three of, co of, of, of communication is, is ideas and judgments. What do you think about that? Let me give you my opinion on this. And how many of you know we got a lot of them? Level four is where we go deeper. Where we at? We're at level what? Four. Level four is where we go deeper. It's about expressing feelings and emotions. It's the growth place in our communication. This is where the growth happens. Then there's level five. Level five is where we go beyond sharing emotions. Watch this now. And just open up ourselves and be vulnerable. Oh, pastor, help us, help us, help us. And, and the researchers said, watch this, the researchers said, Erica, that very few couples spend most of their time at level four and five. Very few couples. So because you're so, uh, Troy, because they're so enthusiastic, Dick and Miss I'm going to lighten the moment by telling you a story. Now that's the loudest y'all been all morning. And I'm kind of jealous, Elder Vernon, because they was louder with you on Tuesday in the lesser crowd than this crowd this morning. Drink your coffee before you come to church. Good to see you, Sister Shirley. Familiar story, but it's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. See, this story was taught by the late Zig Ziglar, and it's called Just Can't Communicate. Somebody say, Just Can't Communicate. This is the story. A woman meets with, her, meets with her attorney and says, I want to divorce my husband. Okay, the attorney responds. 
Let's start with a few questions. Like what, she asks. Well, do you have any grounds? Yes, Daniel, we have about five acres in the country. <laughs> no, 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 no. You see, no, no, no. I mean, do you have a grudge? No, but we have a nice wide carport and a storage shed. Oh, wait, wait, let, let me ask, wait, wait, let, let me ask it. Wait, 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 let me ask Brenda a different way. Wait, 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 wait. Let me ask it a different way. Do you have any complaints about him? Like what? Well, uh, does he beat you up? Vanessa, no. I'm up at least an hour before he, every day. I wish y'all could see y'all mask, y'all mask. I wish y'all could see y'all mask right now, y'all mask. Patricia, BJ, they mask down here doing this. <laughs> listen, listen, like what? Well, does he beat you up? No. I'm, me, I'm up at least an hour, my wife can say that of me. I'm up at least an hour before him every day. Well, what about your role here? Do you ever wake up grouchy? No. When he's in a bad mood, I just let him sleep. Exacerbated, listen, exacerbated, the attorney, the attorney finally asks, what exactly is your problem and why do you want to get a divorce? Well, he replies, my husband just can't seem to communicate. I don't care if you clap, that's my joke. I don't care if you <laughs> Have you ever tried to talk to him and you say, you want to go like Jackie Chan? Can you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> so what is communication? And how do we define it? First of all, let's say what communication is not. It is not intimidation it's not you and I going through some temper tantrum so that you can beat down your spouse with intimidation it's not blowing up can't talk to you because you're like an atom bomb you blow up so communication is not intimidation say it's not intimidation it's, it's, not, it's not guilt trips somebody say Guilt trips. Come on, turn the water faucet off. Don't always try to turn on the water faucet and come with the crocodile tears. We can turn the water works off because sometimes the water works is a means of manipulation. Somebody say, talk faster. It's not out yelling each other. Out talking each other. Oh, God, we got work to do, man. I thought I was going to go home early, but y'all making it hard up here, man. Are y'all listening to me? See, because, see, what we got to understand is, I've said this with us for years. God gave us how many of these? And how many of these? So we got what? So could it mean that God is saying, that we are to spend twice as much time listening yes, as we do talking. Yeah. Can I tell us this? And I've been doing this full time since 1990, so I speak from that lens. That when I have had counseling with couples who listen, listen, because we're missing it. When I have had couples with counselors, Kim, Deaconess Bell, that where adultery took place, that the person that the spouse may have slept with may not have always had the best features. And, I'm, and, and we don't understand that. But what was it that I seen a common thread in all those years I used to do marital counseling at our home church of the Christian House of Prayer? It was because 
the person they committed the affair with was a good listener. I told you, quoted you, Maya Angelou last, last week. Maya Angelou says, what she has learned is this. People, Paulette, may not remember the words that you say to them, but they will remember how you made them feel. So a guy or a girl don't have to always be handsome or fine if they just be a good listener. Somebody that not only listen, hear what you're saying, but understand what you're trying to say. Because they used to say, you get me. You get me. Finally, somebody who gets me. And then the emotional affair eventually ends up as a physical affair. But all it started with was a conversation. They, they didn't look good. They're not going to be on the cover of anybody's magazine. But they are good listeners. So you can be fine, my brother or sister. You can be fine as whoever you might want to quote today. But if you're not a good listener, when your significant other is trying to communicate with you, it's amazing that we've learned to talk to men from the earth to the moon, but we cannot talk to our spouse across the room. We've learned how to communicate from earth to moon, but we cannot communicate with our spouse across the room. Vanessa, could it be that we are not using the same principle? Because the way they are able to talk to their spouse across the room, Lori, Ashley, is because, watch this, the reason why they're able to talk to the man on the moon is because they, before they talk to the man on the moon, watch this, they shoot it up to a satellite. And the satellite shoots it to the man. I wonder if communication would get better. Family, thank y'all for visiting there. Listen, I wonder if, the, if, the, if our communication would be better if first, if the more and the base first, but if Fred and Vincent before he tried to talk to Denise and I tried to talk to Michelle, if we first sent it up to the sunlight. <laughs> And then the sun send it over. It, it, it might be a better. Tr- see, see, see. Me and my wife, whenever we 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 have an afternoon r- routine, we spend our mornings with the Lord, our noontime exercising, and our afternoons in, in appointments. But between those time, that that noontime when we're we're finishing up our workout, we'll call each other. And there's a park that I live by, Old Settlers Park. And I can, listen, listen, I'm trying to teach you. I'll be talking to co-pastor and I get the call in her and we be talking and then I get at certain places in the park. And it gets spotty. I can't hear her. She can't hear me. Uh, the problem is if we really didn't want our conversation interrupted, I wouldn't call it from those dead spaces. Why is it that you always wait at and, and let yourself get in that place where you know communication is at its worst and then you're trying to talk to me? Oh, talk, Pastor Mo. Why is it, I'm sorry, I ain't got my mask on. Listen, 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 listen. Why is, I'm telling you, it happens every time I can be driving. And, and, we, and here's the thing, here's the dumb part. I know where the car's gonna drop at. I know I'm in the park, but I just love to ride through Old Sellers Park and then try to call my girlfriend. <laughs> Knowing that once we get in Old Sellers, Old Sellers gonna interrupt our conversation and that's where a lot of us are at. We're allowing ourselves to get to that same familiar place and you got dropped communication every time. Or oh, oh, here's what happened, here's what happened. Sometimes, watch this, watch this. Sometimes, Latonya, what'll happen is we'll be talking, then it'll go out. <laughs> then we'll come back on. <laughs> and then, how many of you ever saw the commercial that when the girls are telling the girl what to wear to the, to the, to the, to the, to the uh, gala? And because the call is spotty, 
She hears one thing. Oh, y'all in here. She hears one thing when what she's telling her what to wear. Well, what do you think you wear? And that's when the call gets spotted. And when she hears what she hears, and then she goes to the gala, what made her go to the gala dressed in the, it was the way they communicated or the way she, or what she thought she heard. Or what she thought she, uh, you see, or what you thought you heard me say. I didn't say that and I didn't mean that. But you find yourself in that spotty place again. And every time you get in that spotty place, you either drop my communication or you only hear bits and pieces. Oh, talk past the mo. Because I've come to realize, and I say this lovingly to my men among me, and ain't nothing wrong with this brother. It's communication with this woman that works. If there's going to be strong intimacy in the bed. Oh, uh, y'all ain't talking to me. We, 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 I ain't going to touch the bed yet because y'all too safe. Y'all too safe. But, 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 but here's, the, here's the trip, brothers. Listen, a lot of these women ain't just, ain't, ain't just happy because of your looks. They want to know that, oh, man, oh shucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, 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 I'm just saying it. And I know brothers always say, he always getting on the brothers. Because see, you got some sisters now when you tell them, I got a, I got a nice car, she's going to say, got that. I got a nice house, got that. Got a good job with five, got that. I got, no, 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 brother. It, it, it ain't all about what you got. But how do you make me feel? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Elder Maddie, I, I, I'm sorry, Elder Maddie. Giving you something he can feel. See, come on back, come on back, come on back, come on back. Oh Lord, put your horns down, girl. Get your baby girl, she gone. And it ain't even her generation. But I'm giving you something that he can feel. And I know that this love is real. So, it ain't all about the physical things or your income. My Angelo, they'll remember how you made them feel. They'll remember, may not remember what you said, but they'll remember, every time I leave him, I feel good about myself. And I talk to my spouse, and every time I leave him or her, I feel like nothing. So, your enthusiasm is overwhelming. Y'all ready to go home? So let me, I, I stroll down, Kim. I just strolled past 30 minutes of teaching. So let's just get to the nitty gritty. Let's look at the dangers and doorways to better communication. I had some other stuff that I was going to give you. So let's just look at the dangers and doorways to better communication. Thank you, babe. I submit unto us biblically one of the ways that we can better communicate, listen, James chapter number one, verse number 19. Let me show you number one, the doors, dangers and doors to better communication. Watch this. James chapter one, verse number 19. I'm going to read the King James Version. Then I'm going to read the message and the amp. Watch this now. First of all, be quick to listen. Amen. Somebody say quick to listen. Now, now listen, well, here's, here's a scary part, Deacon Don. I know we know a lot of these scriptures that I'm going to give you, but here's the danger. Look up, please look up. We know a lot of Bible, and the word works, but we're not working it. <laughs> Hear me now. I heard, I read in a leadership article just in the last week, Deaconess Cornita, that that preachers are complaining in the article it was telling, it was saying this, what's this? That preachers, Deaconess Maxine, are complaining to Jesus about not giving them more fresh revelation. And that preacher said in that leadership article, preacher, he ain't gonna give you more revelation till he see you living what you already preaching. Are y'all listening to me? 
So it doesn't matter that you might know this. He wants to know, are you living it? See, just like when I said, let's be quick to listen. Some of us are known for speaking our mind. And listen, you're the loudest one in the room and the only one that wants to be heard. Oh, talk past them. I, I know this might not be nice, but it ain't, see, it ain't all the time the physical abuse. I just can't stand your darn mouth. And I'm not trying to cuss. I'm not trying to cuss. I just can't stand your mouth. God, your mouth take us south all the time. All the time. All the time. And then you're going to give me that look at about 9 or 10 o'clock. Are you serious? For us brothers, you want to go buy what? Are you serious? Ain't nobody talking. Okay. Anybody want to join me at the altar? <laughs> Somebody say real talk. See, see, we got, see, see, it's got to be real, saints. See, be quick to listen. James 119, James 119, King James Version says this. Watch this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, James 1.19 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift. There's your name, Swift. You in the Bible, man. Be swift to hear. Watch this. Slow to speak and slow to wrath. Swift, slow, slow. Swift, slow, slow. Message translation. Let me just give it to you. Message translation. Verse 19, the message translation. I love this. Now, Elder Cole, I thought about you because you love the message. Verse 19 says this, Elder Cole. Message translation. Post this at all the intersections. And he's talking about the intersections of our mouths. Some of us got a four-way mouth. Two-way mouth, and a lot of us got that roundabout mouth. <laughs> roundabout, because you see it over here, and hit, and you gonna get around, gonna come right back and say the same thing. And we know who you are. What? Watch what it says. Post this at all the intersections, dear friends. Lead with your ears. Gosh. How can you read that and not respond? Read, lead your family, lead pastors, your church, lead supervisors, your people, lead with your ears. Follow up with your tongue. <laughs> See, I, I can't do it, I can't do it. I'm sorry y'all, I cannot just read God's word and did y'all just hear what that said? Lead with your ears. They're looking for good supervisors who are not ready to fire them, but who can first of all, watch this elder George, supervisor for years, who are able to listen to them. How I've had to learn that if I'm going to surround with myself with people who are more intelligent than me, i got to learn to Trust them when they bring me suggestions. Amen. Lead with your ear. Now, at the, bottom, at the end of the day, it's up to me whether or not I believe it's God, but at least be ready to listen. You're not, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're not Jesus or God. You are not omniscient. You don't, all, you don't know all things. Somebody say lead with your ears. I'm not going to get all the way through this, so listen. Post this at the end. <laughs> when I read this other quote, I said, that, that, cat, that uh, Pentecostal preacher going to love this verse right here. Post this at all the intersections, dear friends. Lead with your ears. Follow up with your tongue. And let anger straggle along in the rear. Gosh. Thank you, Troy. Thank you, Troy, for the clap, my brother. If I had hair, I'd come to your barbershop, Troy, but... 
You know, Brother Follically challenged, so I can't roll through, man. I can't roll through. Might let you hook up the beard, though. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Now, Amplified Bible of that, I'm going to give you just a couple more, and we're going to be through for today. Watch this. Now, look at the same verse in the Amplified. Because, see, I'm, I'm sharing this because each one of them gives us revelation when it talks about how we ought to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Watch this, the Amplified Bible of the same verse of James 1.19. The Amplified Bible says, uh, understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Watch this. Let everyone be quick to hear. Now, watch Deacon Walker, how it explains it when it says quick to hear. Be a careful, thoughtful listener. Okay, okay, okay. Watch this. Watch this, Ladon. That means when your spouse is talking, you're not just sitting there, listen now, with your mind somewhere else just waiting to speak. Cause you, because just because you're silent sometimes don't, mind, don't mean you listening. You're just waiting your turn. Cause I, I can tell because your mouth is doing it. You ain't hearing nothing they say. And, and how do you know? Because when they do open their mouth, you look at them and say, what? Uh, y'all forgive me. Visitors, y'all forgive me. Troy, y'all forgive me. What the hell did you hear? You ain't heard nothing I said. I'm sorry, Lisa, Troy, family that's visit, I'm sorry. What the heck did you hear? But when we're at home, you know how we let it out. What the hell is you here? Anybody know how long these people said? <laughs> That's the loudest amen this morning. On the, on the word hell. On the word, because uh, on the word hell, y'all gave me an amen. Can you say amen again? Come over, Dustin. Notice what it says, the Amplified Bible. It says this, understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to hear. Be a careful and thoughtful listener. Slow to speak. Last this now. A speaker of carefully chosen power. Wow. 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 How many of us know there was words, Lori. Watch this, Ashley, Lori. There was words that were said to us as kids, Ian, that still haunts us to today. There's, watch this now. See, 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 I, I hadn't even got to the part that the words in our communication are important because, watch this, stay with me. Words are containers and carriers. And it was with words that God created the world. So if God words created the world, what kind of world is your words creating? Stay, stay, don't, hold on, clap, watch this then. What kind of world is your words creating? Because I may not get there this morning because you control what kind of life you're going to have by your words. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. So your world, and listen, see, God had the right words because everything he saw was good. Everything he saw was good. Everything he saw was, and words are carriers and containers. And, and I've shared this with you, and please allow pastors some liberty. And, I, you know, we got our routine, and one of my routines is, watch well, this, one of my routines is when, I go, when I'm going to the gym, I release words over us and my family because words are containers. They're carriers. And God said, and it was, and it was good. And God said, and it was, and God kept saying, and it just kept happening. And it just kept being good by what God said. So I got to 
confession that I've said for years, I'm not going to say it now, over us as a church family and over my wife and kids that I say every time, just before I'm getting out that truck to go into the gym, I'm releasing words. I'm releasing, because I know from God's word. Listen now, words are carriers or containers that create my world. And hear me, hear me, hear me, saints. And sometimes I'm saying to us, that the finances and the intimacies are jacked up because we just can't talk to each other. The Amplified Bible again says, watch this, the Amplified Bible again says, uh, in James 1.19, it says this, understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters, let everyone be quick to hear. Somebody say quick to hear. A careful, thoughtful listener. Come on, that's rich, man. A careful at what? I'm telling you, he, he or she is not, didn't sleep with them because they was fine. They was a careful and thoughtful listener. He let me talk the whole time and he just listened. She let me talk the whole time and she was a listener. She wasn't a head turner, but she was a good listener. Yeah, he got some ugly features, but he's a good listener. I'm, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not ugly. He got some challenging features. He's not ugly. He's just challenging. They're not ugly. They're just. <laughs> Dr. James Robs, Dr. James Roberts, Dr. James Dotson said years ago, so what do you do when you look at somebody's baby and they don't have the best of features? You just, you know, no, 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 I'm not going to, I wouldn't do that. You just say, there's the baby. You don't make fun of nobody's baby. You don't make fun of nobody's baby. Okay, so what did I tell you? Okay, so you got to be what? Quick to listen. Second thing I want you to see as I close, and this is not all my points. Can I pick it up next time? Yeah. All right, listen. Second thing I want you to see when it comes to the dangers and doorways to better communication, not only be quick to listen, but don't rush to judgment. Proverbs 18. Go to Proverbs 18 real quick. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Are you getting anything? Yeah. So, so tell somebody, don't rush to judgment. Proverbs 18, verse 13, uh, the King James Version, then I'm going to read the Amp and the New Living. And then after that, can I give you one more? Yeah. Okay, listen, listen. Don't, somebody say, don't rush to judgment. Because I'm close to my 45 minutes and I don't want to go much longer. Watch this. Watch this now. Proverbs 18, 13, the King James Version says this. Watch this. And this is one of my favorite scriptures, God's son. He that answereth a matter before he hears it. Stop. Look up. How does this scripture apply? I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. He that answer a matter before he hears it. I know what you're going to say. And, and I know she, she don't mind if we use this at that time. Listen, she said, I know what you're going to say. She would say, would you just be quiet and let me say? <laughs> okay, y'all so save y'all. Okay. <laughs> and you, what do you do, Pastor Moore? I get quiet. <laughs> and grit my teeth. I'd be like, oh. Uh, 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 okay, yeah, okay, okay. I need a mouth guard right now. We're saving some marriages. I'm trying to help us. Because cause listen, they're not being torn down nowadays by stepping out. Your mouth is bringing our marriage south. Shut up, let me, please. Oh, that's, that's, that's real talk. Oh, yeah, y'all can stay here talking about y'all being there speaking in tongues, yeah, oh, yeah, right. Uh, another kind of tongue. We speaking in tongues, yeah, you speaking in tongues, all right. Another kind of tongue, and we don't need the interpretation. Oh, we gotta go to the east side. Listen, he that answered the matter 
before he heareth it. It is folly and a shame unto him. So God is saying, don't be in a rush to judgment. Amen. Thinking you already know what they're going to say and more importantly, what they mean. You're not God. You don't know their heart. Amplified Bible says this. Look at the Amplified Bible. Same verse, verse 13. It says this. He who answers before he hears the facts. Amplified Bible. He who answers before he hears the facts. It is folly and shame to him. Last one, New Living Translation. Watch this now. New Living Translation. Spouting off before listening. Would you please shut up and let me talk? Let me speak. Just maybe if you listen for once. Convince me you can do it once. We're going to have a big altar call at the end of this message. <laughs> Spouting off before. Now, let me just say this to you, if I can just be honest and throw myself under the bus. As you know, I'm the talker. So a lot of things I'm saying to you. <laughs> it's like a Catholic confession, Mother Jesse. I'm sitting on this side. I didn't slow. I didn't pull it back and said, help me, saints, for I have sinned. <laughs> Spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. Uh, I got much more to say, but because you've been such a good class, we're going to pick it up. We need to talk. Couples and communication. Give God a hand for the word. Amen. <clears throat> Come on, for the Lord, not pastor. Give the Lord a hand for the word. <clears throat> Our heads are bow, our eyes are closed. Thank you again, first time visitors, for coming. Those of you online and those of you present, we know you had a choice. You chose to come. Troy, this family over here that's visiting with us, thank y'all so much for coming. We're honored by your presence. Those of you online, streaming land, thank you for visiting us online. We're so honored. Father, we thank you for your word. And while we may sprinkle humor, doing our delivery of your holy word. The truth is a lot of marriages are still hurting. This pandemic, Father God, have put some marriages, it's like they've gotten the coronavirus and they're on life support. And if you don't come through for them and they let you come through for them, would be, we will experience another marriage dying but it is my prayer that all those that are married will consider these simple things that we shared here this morning beginning with just being better listeners and being quick to listen that we won't rush to judgment thinking we already know what they're going to say or mean already know what they mean before they say it Forgive us for interrupting our spouse and being short with our spouse. And sometimes our family is getting the worst side of us with our tongue, giving them a tongue lashing. Forgive us for that. We all need to be better communicators, Father. Beginning with you, as Elder Verna said to us, we don't want our prayer life to be simply a monologue, but a dialogue. We don't want to be in prayer, and we're the ones that's doing all the talking. Let us begin to even improve our communication with you, Lord. We do all the talking, and we never let you talk. So let it begin there. Then let it begin with us and our spouses. <clears throat> Flowing down to us with our kids, our grandchildren, siblings, parents, friends, acquaintances, co-workers, help us to become better communicators by being quick to listen and not always 
rush into judgment. And we need your help to do it because in and of ourselves we can't do it. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Just say this with me. Father, help me to become a better communicator beginning with you. Let it be a dialogue not a monologue. And let it improve with our families, with my spouse, my children, grandchildren, parents and siblings, friends and acquaintances, co-workers. Help me to be a better, God-inspired communicator for your glory. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. If you're here this morning and you do not know Jesus Christ, if you're watching this program online, whether it's in streaming land, by whatever format you're watching it, if you're in the sanctuary, you say, Pastor Moore, I do not know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. <clears throat> Let you in on a little secret. Right now, we as pastors are already thinking about the big day that's coming here in just a little bit. That's Easter Sunday, when some people will make their yearly pilgrimage to the house of God just to say that they've been there. We call them CME, CME members. They come on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. But today is the day to get your life right with God. Today is the day of salvation if you do not know him for real. It's not enough just to be religious. It's not enough just to say I've been water baptized. It's not enough to have a member of your family as an officer in the church, you need to know Jesus for yourself. Z, God does not have grandchildren. He only has children. And the Bible says, we don't hear it too much anymore, but you got to hear the truth. One of our precious sisters said to me, she said, Pastor Moore, I don't know about you, but I don't need nobody playing with my soul because hell is real and I ain't trying to go there. Sister Carmichael, I don't think she'll mind me saying that. She said, I don't need nobody playing with my soul, Pastor. Hell is real, and I'm not trying to go there. The good news is hell was never made for us, God's creation. It was made for the devil and his angels. But hell is a real place. And if you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will enter into eternity without God. And that, place is, that eternity place is called hell. Not made for you, and God ain't trying to send you there. We choose to go there by rejecting his son. When you reject Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you just book your ticket to hell. One of our dear friends, Elder Dolly, at our mother church say, but we're standing at the gates of hell telling you to turn around. You're headed in the wrong direction. We encourage you to run to Jesus. He loves you. Not mad at you, madly in love with you. And if you're not right this morning, whether you're sitting here in person or online, and you say, Pastor Moore, pray with me. I want to get my relationship right with God. I'm not going to call you forward as we normally do. We've kind of tweaked the altar call, though we'll be getting back to it eventually, bringing people forward. But for now, let's just make the altar your heart. If you're in this place and you say, Pastor Moore, I'm not saved, I'm backslidden, I'm lukewarm, I just need to make a fresh commitment, whether you're in streaming land or in person, and you say, Pastor Moore, that's me. Now, those of you in streaming land, of course, we can't see you, but I'm going to ask you, if you want me to pray for you just to get your relationship right with, it, with God, you can raise your hand. Is there anyone present in the sanctuary or anyone on, online? You can just raise your hand. You might can put it in the chat room that you're raising your hand. However you do that on those platforms. Is there anyone present? Say, Pastor Moore, pray with me. I need to get my relationship right with God. I need to get my relationship right with God. We're not going to embarrass you. We're simply going to pray the prayer of repentance. Because a lot of times, hear me, beloved, and we just made up our mind. I, well, let me say it like this. I've made up my mind that in these last days, we're going to speak the truth in love. Here's the truth, beloved. God don't need us. We need him. We're not doing God a favor by coming to him. You're doing yourself a big favor. So we got to get away from this preaching that makes us think God needs us. Though God loves us, he wants us, but he don't need anybody. We're not doing him a favor. We're doing ourselves a favor by coming to him. So if you're here, present, or online, and you're not in, your, you're not in the right place with God, I'm going to pray a prayer. If you are honest and sincere, 
I'm telling you, he'll meet you and change your life. Get ready to say this prayer with me. Kingdom family and friends, as a reaffirmation of your faith, say this prayer with me. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you according to your word. And your word says, if I come to you, you won't turn me away. So I come to you now and I confess, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner against thee and thee only have I sinned and done evil in thy sight. But you said, if I confess my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I confess my sins. I believe Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. He died and he rose again for me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Help me to live a life that represents you and pleases the Father. Father God, like the prodigal son, I come to myself. Restore everything that sin, Satan, self has stolen out of my life. Restore my joy, my peace, my love for you and the things of God. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. Let's give God a big hand praise for somebody that prayed that. <clears throat> if you prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to, the, welcome to the family. If you're a backslider and you prayed it to come back home, welcome back home. Amen. In just a few moments, we're going to put on the screen our information. We'd love for you to reach out to us and say, Pastor Moore, I prayed that prayer. We'll reach back to you and encourage you in your Christian walk with God. Amen. Here's the time now where we usually receive our offering, but we no longer collect it uh, in buckets here at the sanctuary. We have just down that hallway there, a giving station. If you believe in uh, giving, we actually, that you would consider giving a a tax deductible gift to the kingdom of God Christians and our cause is simple it's the cause of Christ and we're called to the common man so we're going to ask you if you would consider that to give to the cause of Christ amen church amen let's stand to our feet let's stand to our feet can we give God a hand for the word amen yeah that's for him not pastors for him thank you and I really mean that. It's for him. It's not, I'm not saying that fake because how many of you know our issues are too real for us to be coming to church and somebody playing with my emotion? I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I can't do it, man. I just can't do it. Certain Crescent Television, I can't do it, man. Man, you ain't helping me, man. I need help. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I want to be better. Anybody want to be better? Yeah, I want to be better, man. All right, let's cover ourselves with our songs. Now, we want to encourage you to join us on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. We are open for in-person if you can't join us online, but do come and join us on, uh, in person if you can. Let's cover ourselves and our families for the week. And we say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the... I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon. Because he has set his love upon me, 
therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Give God a hand praise. Now, as you've been blessed coming in, may you be blessed going out. May the Lord your God make you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. May you be blessed in the city, in the field, and in your storehouses. May the Lord bless, favor, and establish the works of your hands. I release this upon you and yours. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Everybody say, each one, reach one for him before he comes. Come on, church. Each one, reach some for him before he comes. Each one, bring one for him before he comes. You entered into worship, exit out to witness in Jesus' name. Give God a hand, praise. We are dismissed. God bless you. Join us on Tuesday at 7. Join us on Tuesday at 7. God bless.